Hey everyone, welcome back to Automation. So today I thought I would explore the theme of fuel economy by taking things to the extreme with hypermiling. Um, for some reason I used to think it was hypermilling, but it's hypermiling. So let's keep that in mind as we go forwards. I may mess that up. So what these eco modders do is they put aero modifications, they put engine modifications, just anything that they can do to get better fuel economy, uh, they do to their cars. Uh, and they also have different techniques, including shutting off the engine going downhill, and also um, manual transmission techniques such as pushing in the clutch when you're going downhill, that kind of thing to try and save fuel. Um, I haven't done too much research into it, mostly just in the look of the cars, but it seems really interesting and so that's why I wanted to explore it a little bit more today. But before we get into that, I should definitely point out a few things. One, if you want your car featured here with this other one, uh, please buy a Bugo sticker at AutomotiveFlux.com and I'll feature you in a video if you send a picture of the sticker on your car or your laptop or whatever. Uh, they are very high quality stickers and uh, yeah, thank you to those who have bought them already. And if you've been wondering where the project car videos are, the IRL videos, they are on my second channel called Bright Hill. Links to both of these things are in the description. And uh, yeah, I've been updating people on there pretty much weekly, just having fun trying to get some stuff done. Last time I was polishing headlights, so yeah. So I want to show you a prototype that I made yesterday when I was kind of messing around with this concept. Uh, it's based on the Jeep Wrangler, except it's excessively worse. Here's what it used to look like, this is what it looks like now. Oh yes, there have been some changes. Um, so I set a couple of rules for myself, which we will set again here, but the main things that I attempted to do were add a big piece on the back, so it kind of looks like a hyper milling uh, aero piece. Uh, we covered up the back wheels because obviously they don't turn, so they don't need to be uh, messed with too much. And then the front end has a giant wedge because the Jeep isn't very aerodynamic. Same thing down here, uh, we have some side skirts and stuff. It was more just a proof of concept to see what I can do. And also I managed to get it down to 11.7 liters per 100 kilometers. That comes from 19, uh, so a pretty significant difference. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to do the same thing again, except to a different vehicle in my lineup that is equally inefficient, and that is the Hummer. Before we go too far though, I'm going to quickly export this so we can drive it in BeamNG and then kind of compare these two to their original versions in terms of fuel economy. I want to run through this quickly so we can spend more time in Beam because I think that's where the real gains can come from. Actually driving the car makes more difference than the mods. Okay, so this is the Hummer that I made a long time ago. I call it the Hummer and that's to avoid uh, any legal issues. <laughs> Uh, not that anybody would sue me in automation, I don't think, but you never know. Um, so this thing makes 349.7 horsepower, basically 350, super low RPM, uh, V10, which is very strange, but hey, um, we're not going for realism here. 2,283 kilos is pretty darn heavy, and the fuel economy is over here 26.6 uh, .6 liters per 100 kilometers. That is not great. I feel like we can do better than that, and uh, I have some ways to get there, but first, let me just make something clear. I don't want to extensively modify the engine. Um, we will tune the engine again using the uh, like the fuel slider, basically, to try and figure that out. We'll be doing things that somebody could do without opening the engine up. Um, at least that's my idea. So we're not going to change the compression, we're not going to add turbos or anything, just basic engine mods to try and fix it. And then obviously massive weight reduction is going to be necessary. This thing weighs way too much. <laughs> so hopefully we can get it a little bit lower and uh, we will be doing some aero mods, which don't necessarily do anything to the actual car, but they're fun. So why not? Okay, so to start off with, we are here in the old engine bay. This is a cast iron V10. It weighs a lot. It is 7.6 liters. My goodness, that's going to be interesting. Compression is very high and uh, we'll probably have to lose some power. Oh, it is turboed as well. That's gonna mean some interesting things. Uh, yeah, I don't wanna swap the turbos, so we'll try not to mess with them too much. It's gonna be mostly here where I make some changes. Uh, so let's see what we can do. Currently, we are looking at 14.3% fuel efficiency and still 26.6 liters per 100 Ks. 
Okay, so something that's important to note is uh, this thing has super, super low RPM. That was the whole gimmick with it, to only be limited to 2000 RPM, um, which, <laughs> I mean, if we raise this up, uh, it's going to immediately break the engine and ruin all of the tuning that has been done to get it to a good power state here. So uh, that's going to make things fancy. Also, plus 15 quality sliders. I don't feel like we can do very much here. <laughs> We're going to have to work on this. So one advantage I had with the Jeep was that it wasn't very finely tuned. Uh, it didn't have a gimmick, <laughs> at least not too much of one. It was basically just supposed to be a Jeep. In this case, it's a lot more difficult because uh, I can't really do anything to the engine without breaking it, uh, at least in terms of minor things. I wanted to turn down the fuel mixture because I thought that was a reasonable thing to do, but we're not going to be able to do that because it's just going to get bad in terms of knocking. And sure, our um, <laughs> economy might improve. <laughs> Actually, it's getting worse, but uh, yeah, it's not really doing anything for us. Um, so I'm kind of curious now, what can we do without touching the engine, and then we'll come back here and see what else is available uh, because maybe I'll have to turn down the compression and just completely retune this without changing the internals to try and get similar power but much better economy. Uh, we'll have to probably get rid of the gimmick too, we'll see. So gearing is extremely important. This car apparently can only do 150 kilometers an hour, which is awkward. Um, so what we're going to do to give it a good chance at this is, uh, well, we're going to be watching this number right here, rear wheel drive. Instantly we're down uh, by a little bit in terms of our economy, that's 0.9 better. Uh, and also manual transmission, um, which we're just going to say we swapped in a manual and we got better fuel economy because of it, because I don't think we're going to be able to get the results I want with an auto. Still, the Hummer is stuck at 150 kilometers an hour, which is not good for our economy gains uh, because I want to be able to raise that as high as I can. Uh, we want long gearing um, as long as it can get to a point, obviously. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Still issues with wheel spin, 29%, uh, all of that in first, second, and third. <laughs> yeah, that's going to ruin our gains here. Okay, so we're running chunky off-road tires, that's simply not going to do. From my experience, hard long life is the most efficient, and you can see instantly there, that's basically two points better on our fuel economy just because of a tire change. Like, it does matter quite a lot. Um, and you can see here, medium compound, 23, uh, sports, and then slicks obviously worse, so this is the best we can get. And now it's looking a lot more like a civilian Hummer, which is maybe not quite what we wanted, uh, but I'm gonna immediately do this because those lower the weight uh, just by a little bit, and um, yeah, we're shrinking tire sizes. <laughs> this is gonna mess things up considerably. Oh yeah, she's deep into the understeer, which is strange. Um, <laughs> two 15s on the back, and uh, we'll make it two 15s on the front, I guess. Um, these are still very big. Uh, I'm actually going to make them alloy as well. Uh, we want to go for that weight reduction as much as possible. And I'm shrinking down the tire diameter. Uh, I feel like 15s are probably fine. Um, <laughs> we're not really concerned about looks here. This is all about the economy. So it's got solid discs. Uh, I'm going to say that they were able to upgrade those in order for less weight. <laughs> and also, I want to be able to shrink down the size of them as much as possible. Uh, which is a bad idea, I know, but again, for our own purposes here, you shouldn't be on the brakes very much if you're doing this kind of thing, so down she goes. Aerodynamics. Um, so we have an off-road skid tray, that's not going to do it. We need fully clad, and uh, we need no brake airflow because that's going to help us. And we'll leave cooling where it is, I think, uh, because otherwise it's going to mess things up. And I don't think it'll do very much for our economy. If you look at it now, 21.1 and 20. 0.9, so not much. Uh, we may as well have this up there. Okay, seats. Uh, no back seats. Definitely don't need those. Uh, front seats, we're going to go down to halves. We got no <laughs> none of this stuff here. That's 20 liters per hundred kilometers. Decent improvement so far. Power steering, I'm going to make it electric uh, because that'll improve our economy once again. It's not running off of the engine. <laughs> and uh, safety, nah, no safety. Let's get rid of that stuff. So the suspension has been changed fairly drastically. Uh, I got rid of the off-road stuff, 
we're not going to need it this shouldn't be going off road <laughs> and we're down to 18.7 that's getting a lot better and that's without touching the engine at all um, but i still think we can do more in terms of bmng itself uh, just driving the car is going to give us an advantage now let's go back to the engine and see what we can do after we take a quick look 18.7 cruise is down to 12 acceleration is down to six not bad now i really want to make this engine aluminum and i want to like mess things up drastically but uh, we'll try and keep it the same except the compression which is currently extreme or borderline extreme i'm going to lower that down um, we're going to lose power i'm going to try not to go below 350 we'll see how that works but as you can see like the compression was way high and we only gained a little bit of power out of it. It was hardly worth it. Um, we will be able to do a lot more now with this. Okay, so I just have that super low and we're way down on power. I mean, down by 30. Uh, that's not really that much considering how much fuel we save by doing this. But uh, yeah, back over to the fuel system and uh, we'll, we'll stick it in ultimate. We'll keep it there. We're just going to say they run the best, but they don't run much of it. And down she goes. <laughs> say goodbye to the good old fuel economy. We're up to 26.8% and 9.7 liters per 100 kilometers on a Hummer. This thing still has 310 horsepower. I'm not done yet. Okay, that is the fuel mixture at the lowest it can go, eight liters per 100 kilometers. That is a big change from 25, still making a cool 300 horsepower. That is a 50 horsepower loss for a significant fuel economy gain. Honestly, I think that kind of thing is worth it. Uh, I think we can go back over to this. We're only at 91, so we can get a bit more compression, uh, and that means we can get a bit more power. Just a little bit uh, right there, 308. Not bad at all. And that makes us even more efficient because we are down to 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers. That is much better than I thought it was gonna be, to be honest with you. Uh, lowering down the exhaust size, we're not losing any power, so I'm just gonna leave it right there. If we try single, oh, we actually gain power on single, nice. Okay, so I'm making that change to single exhaust. Um, I mean, it's just gonna keep us where we were, but we actually gain a bit of power out of it, so I really don't mind. We're up in the very high quality stuff here, so yeah, it doesn't make much of a difference. And my goodness, that is an efficient V10, holy. Uh, keeping this low RPM, suddenly we are shockingly efficient. 32% efficient in the old fuel economy standards here. Not bad. And back over to the detailed stats, 7.79 liters per 100 kilometers, 5.4 liters in the cruise, 6.65 liters in the old acceleration. That's cool. <laughs> That's really cool. So hopefully we can replicate that in the game. Obviously first we need to make some aesthetic changes and then we'll have to come back and see what else we can do in terms of the drivetrain. I really am sad that we're stuck in 150, and I'm not sure what's limiting that. Um, if anybody knows, please let me know for the future, but that is just very unfortunate. Alright, so I've given it a bit of a makeover in terms of the color, just having it be black and uh, just aluminum wheels now to reflect the fact that they're aluminum wheels. <laughs> uh, what I want to do though is make it look efficient. Uh, so the way to do that in my mind is to go for those crazy aero mods, mostly for the fun of it. I don't think they're actually going to do anything in BeamNG. Uh, and to start off with, let's put on some hubcaps. These are perfect because they are, well, efficient. Uh, fancy wheels are generally not as efficient, just the way that the air blows around them. So if they just glance off like that, we're good. <laughs> That's what I want to see. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the trailer hitch. I'm going to get rid of the beautiful hmm on the back because I feel like we're probably not going to need that. Same thing with this, let's get rid of it. Um, we'll just go for a very classically styled one of these cars and uh, trim is probably not necessary. So I think one of the things I forgot way back in the day with this car was the exhaust. So I'm just going to quickly add one on right now uh, just so we have something <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's go back to the rest of this. Um, the antenna would likely be shaved, so we'll cut that off, and I don't want to do anything drastic with the front end like I did on the last Jeep thing, so what I'm going to do instead is give it a ridiculous low trimmed body kit, um, and we'll try and see if that works and <laughs> makes it look a little bit more realistic perhaps. Okay, so we now have a chin splitter thing, which is very odd looking, 
but I think it'll be functional. Uh, that's the idea of at least. Um, the more functional it looks, the, uh, the better. And uh, I'm just gonna quickly paint all this stuff um, to blend in with the rest of the truck. It, it really does remind me of Need for Speed a little bit. Um, not saying it's supposed to, but <laughs> that's kind of the way we're going here, isn't it? Low body kit is the future. Honestly, that worked out so well that I think I'm gonna do the same thing on this side using the same piece. I don't know what this is supposed to be, probably just a trim piece, but it works marvels for this, and it looks kind of cool because it's got a bit of a flare to it. I'm gonna try and cross over the rear wheel as well uh, and cover it entirely, because we don't really need that. Okay, so this is looking a little bit funky, but I really, really like it. Uh, <laughs> some big changes to the side of the car have occurred. Let me just paint that the nice new trim color. It almost looks like a boat, which is not my intention, but it really should have been. Uh, <laughs> this was a great idea. Okay, so next thing on the chopping block, the ye old chopping block, is, uh, well, maybe this exhaust pipe has to go. I put it there, and now it's in the way. Mm, there's hardly any exhaust in this thing anyway, let's be real. I want to get rid of the fuel cap, but I'm going to leave it there for the irony's sake. And, um, yeah, alright, let's do the back end, and then we'll give this a big old tail. Because, well, to be efficient, you want the air to fly off your car just as efficiently as it flies into your car. Uh, so, we need to have the air properly diffused at the back and uh, not getting messed up here and messing up our fuel economy. We want it to be a smooth transition out the back. I know nothing about aerodynamics, that's just what I see. So, let's go ahead and try it. Okay, so what I did last time for this was uh, interesting, and that was on the Jeep or the beep, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, maybe YouTube would flag a beep, so I'm just going to keep calling it the old Jeep. But I put one of these on the back, I made it huge, and then I had a second one to help taper it out even further, and that was kind of that. Uh, and I thought that was fine, so I think I'm going to do that again, except this time maybe we'll make it body matching <laughs> or something, I'm not sure. We kind of want to make it look like it's actually supposed to be part of the car, uh, so, things to keep in mind, we can't mess with the taillights because we need them. Um, or, I mean, we probably could, but I, I feel like it'll look funkier if we don't, so that's kind of why I'm not. <laughs> um, and then, these upper lights are probably necessary as well, so I don't want to mess those up. However, <laughs> that's looking the part. Oh yeah, no, that's good. I'm not sure that would actually do much, it's more of a sleeper piece on there, but if we make it bigger, it might be more funny, so I'm just going to keep going. That is a tall lad on the back, and uh, yeah, goodness. Probably not legal, because somebody would just smash right into that, not knowing that your car sticks out that far, but it's kind of fun. So let's put another one. And the easiest way to do that is just copy this and then shrink it, um, because it's already set to the right angle and everything. Nice and easy to do. <laughs> we'll just shrink that lad in there. Beautiful. That little line adds just a little bit more to it, I think. And then we need something on the end. Maybe a reflector. There we go. Now it officially has a reflector, and therefore it's very likely illegal still, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> let's put a badge on it. I don't know. I feel like something needs to go there. Just a little something. Hey, we gotta represent while we're out here, okay? <laughs> gotta be staring at my old logo for the entirety of this. But that is the fuel economy-wise Hummer and I feel like we should probably try and make it work nicely in beam. Uh, no roof rack or anything to take off. Uh, maybe mirrors could be a bit more efficient. Let's get rid of those and put on something a bit nicer. See, that's more efficient. Small, aerodynamic, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay, that is not bad actually. That is quite good in my opinion. Probably a better concept than the Jeep and just a nice shade of blue as well. Uh, all right, let's try this thing out in beam and G and see how she goes. Still suffering with wheel spin. Actually, you know what? We haven't even touched this stuff again uh, now that the engine has changed drastically, so I should probably do that. Yeah, I kind of forgot to tune the thing. Uh, that's probably important. <laughs> the back wheels are stuck in there, but they are really darn close, so I almost want to make them smaller if we can. Uh, maybe two tens on the front and the back. Really tiny, but hey, 
good fuel economy is all we care about, right? So <laughs> that's all we need. Uh, we can actually make the thing lower, not saying that's necessarily good in our case. Now we could go up to carbon ceramics and we could drop pistons and stuff to try and get the weight down, but I feel like where we're at is decent in terms of brakes and such. Um, we're down to 7.7 .7 now actually. Stopping power is going to be okay. Um, the issues we're having so far are wheel spin obviously, short gearing which we can't change because something's up with the engine and the, the gearing ratio is all screwed. Dampers are hard, engine is knocking. Uh oh, let me fix that. It's got 1% knock. <laughs> okay, let me just quickly go drop the compression down by one, and look at that, we actually gained power. <laughs> oh, thank you, game, for letting me know about that. And it's saying everything here is firm. I just went for a sport preset. I want it to be a little bit firm. I feel like that's necessary uh, for our purposes, but. Okay, we'll just go for normal and we'll hope for the best, uh, although it's going to be as low as it can possibly be, even though it has leaf springs and all that. So, yeah, let's try it. Let's see what it does. And again, 7.73 liters per 100 kilometers. We got to try and match that. Let's do it. So this is what the Jeep looks like in BMNG if you remember that car from way at the beginning. And I want to use the Jeep to introduce you to a few things that we have going on here. Uh, one is, uh, well, we have cruise control and that's very important for what we're going to be attempting to do. Uh, to keep the throttle steady because I don't have the most steady hands um, in order to show our optimal fuel economy. <laughs> which you can see with the small but hopefully legible um, widget that I have down there which should show us uh, what we're doing at any given time. So if I shut off the engine it'll say zero as an example. Um, and this is what the Hummer looks like over here. Uh, thankfully this one also turned out fine and it does appear to work fine as well <laughs> which is great. Um, this one obviously using much less fuel, much less RPM to work with as well, but still we'll have to be very very careful as you can see just accelerating like that we were burning up to 60 liters a hundred per hundred kilometers and that's kind of where things go we're not going for that instant economy we're going for that average economy so if i have the throttle all the way down on this car fifth gear we're averaging maybe 20 30 uh, liters per hundred kilometers and thankfully our fancy brake light on the back actually works but if I coast, if I switch all the way up to fifth gear really quickly, and then I coast at maybe 50 kilometers an hour, we should see a reduction in our economy significantly. At least I hope so. <laughs> uh, our, our reduction in the number, I mean. Because that's liters per hundred kilometers, you want to see a lower number instead of a higher one. Um, <laughs> like miles per gallon, it's all about high liters per hundred kilometers. It's all about the lows. But you can see I'm just kind of cruising at, uh, well, I was cruising at 90 kilometers an hour. So throttle just barely touched and we're making six, five liters per hundred kilometers depends. And that's where the steady hand comes in of cruise control because it'll keep us going at whatever speed I want and I can modify the gears myself as we do it. So that is where things are, and hopefully we can do a little bit of testing to see what we can do with this. Um, as well, this thing still has a decent amount of power, so it is actually decently quick. The gearing is all messed up because of that whole 150 limit thing, but that's mostly just due to the V10, I suspect, uh, and the low RPM messing things up. But hey, that's where we are. <laughs> Let's try and see if we can't just do better. So if you remember from before, the Jeep had a fuel economy of around 11 liters per 100 kilometers, and this thing we managed to get 7.7, .7. so theoretically this should use less fuel if we do the same distance and if I'm consistent in my driving, uh, which I'm not, <laughs> just spoiler alert. Uh, one thing about the Jeep that I mentioned, I think, but I haven't shown you yet, is uh, it has a full under tray, <laughs> which is a, a bit of a pain in the butt to make, but it's just represented by these big black uh, pieces down here. I didn't suspect that they'd be this dark, but yeah, it doesn't look bad, actually. The color scheme is decent. So let's take these things into the great beyond, and we will first experiment by attempting to get the optimal speed as to which uh, we can get optimal fuel economy, and hopefully I still be able to maintain the highway speeds. That's kind of my goal. I want to see what we can do on the highway. Um, city is generally not great for cars like this, like hybrids are much better in the city, but 
uh, again, we'll see what I can do. Like the reality is that highway gearing has a lot to do with your end gear. Obviously my fifth gear in this case needs to be very, very tall in order for us to be able to get good economy that way. I'm burning through a lot of fuel right now, but it's mostly just because I'm shifting up. We are never going to run out of runway here. It'll just keep going forever. But I want to set the cruise to 98 kilometers an hour and maybe up to 100. And we'll see kind of where we are in terms of economy. It appears to be settling mostly at 7.5 to 8 liters per 100 kilometers, which makes sense. Um, so you can cruise 100 on the highway with this thing and get good economy. Like, that's good for a Jeep. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, to give you some examples, like I think my wife's RAV4, um, in the summer, it, because the economy gets worse in the winter, obviously, when running winter tires as well makes a big difference, but I'm pretty sure she can do about six, uh, but that's with a hybrid, so a little bit different. Okay, so we've kind of researched the 100 kilometer an hour mark as to about seven and a half to eight-ish uh, liters per 100 kilometers if we went on an average there. And I'm wondering now about 120. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. So we'll have to pause and wait for it to settle after the acceleration period. Uh, once it gets up to 120, then it'll stop. And then we'll be able to see where we're at. Uh, looking like up into the eights and nines here. 8.8, 8.79. Hmm. Okay, so 120 is a little bit more variable. We're somewhere in the mid to high eights, getting up into the nines occasionally, sometimes dipping into the sevens, but that's where it is. And last one, because I'm kind of curious to see what it looks like on the Hummer as well. Let's go up to 150 kilometers an hour, because that's the max speed of the Hummer, and we will uh, see what they can do in terms of that economy. This is fairly quick. You would not be cruising on like this on the highway unless you're intent on breaking laws. Uh, and we're doing 10 liters per 100 kilometers. Again, not terrible, not horrible. Um, my Infiniti G35, as an example, when I was cruising the highway every day, the best economy I ever got, uh, at least so far, was 8.3 liters per 100 kilometers. And that's on premium. <laughs> not great economy for that car, but for a hyper milling Jeep, I think 10 is pretty decent for 150. Let's check out the Hummer next. Oh yeah, by the way, we can just shut off the engine and get zero, and then just cruise to our infinite uh, demise here, where I'm just gonna leave this thing going, and we'll come back to it, I guess, and see how far it's gone. All right, so the Hummer actually has enough power to start in third gear, which is uh, not too surprising. I mean, it still has 312 horsepower, 313 horsepower. Okay, so let's perform the same tests. Uh, obviously, wheel spin, whoops my fault. Uh, let's go on up to 100 kilometers an hour or so. We'll just get up into fifth gear, then hit the old set, try and get up to 100 k's and see kind of where this thing sits in terms of its economy. Keeping in mind, of course, that this thing is a literal brick, uh, <laughs> much like the Jeep. They're both bricks in their own way. But we're cruising here 100 k's an hour, very steady, smooth and steady, actually. Um, and again, better economy 6.8 to 7 looks like we're down by about half a liter per 100 kilometers when compared to the previous car and accelerating up to 120 k's an hour let's do this and see how it goes uh again we're up into 20 liters per 100 k's it did not take long to get to 120 uh that's down to goodness 7.2 7.3 it did not go up very much in terms of that uh, that little bit there. We went up 20 kilometers, which theoretically is about 20% higher, and we did not go up 20% in terms of numbers. Uh, we've gone up by maybe maybe a liter per 100 kilometers, so just it'd be just a little bit less than 20%. And accelerating once again up to 150 if it'll do it. And let's see if it'll actually get up there. I think 150 is the absolute max for this car. 7 point... Oh, wow. That is smooth. <laughs> I guess being at 2000 RPM when you're doing this has some benefits, but 7.4, not much of a gain over top of the 120. Very, very little, in fact. Goodness, this is a very good Autobahn cruiser. <laughs> 
okay, everybody in Germany, buy yourselves a Hummer and then report back to me how good you did on fuel economy. Come on. Okay, we're kind of entering the uh, great unknown, but don't worry, the map still goes. It just isn't going to look like we're moving, but trust me, we are. Uh, I want to do one more thing with this in terms of highway economy. Let's lower this all the way down. And this is not the correct way to do this, by the way. But uh, we'll just keep lowering this down until it hits 80 kilometers an hour. I want to see how much of a difference that makes. Okay, so we're decelerating and therefore the engine is not really doing anything. Zero liters per hundred kilometers. If somebody was decelerating and they are somebody who is a hypermiler, uh, they're probably going to just shut off the engine, especially if it's downhill, at least from what I've seen. Uh, and then they'll restart it without using electricity. Uh, again, I would assume <laughs> uh, from from the articles that I've read about it, it seems to be sort of like that, where they have a button to turn off the engine um, in certain situations to try and save as much fuel as possible. Like it, it's gamified, which I think is really cool. I've actually been thinking about getting uh, something that'll tell me my instant economy and my Tiburon just so I can drive more efficiently. For my own purposes, I want to save fuel. I don't want a hypermile necessarily, but I'd like to do better than seven, which is currently where that car is, um, according to my graphs, because I like to calculate my fuel. Uh, I'll talk about that in a Bright Hill video at some point, but here we are, 6.2, 6.4. If we look at that versus 100 kilometers an hour, it is not much different. Um, strangely, actually, this thing is efficient in all aspects. <laughs> I find that kind of cool though. Alright, cruise control is off and uh, we'll just coast into nothingness again. Let's see where the Jeep has ended up. Well, it's also sitting in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Not too surprising. Let's bring it back to civilization where it is currently pegged. How did that happen? Oh, cruise control is still set to 150. Goodness. Um, yeah, manual transmission cruise control. I'm not used to that. Okay, for my second test, I want to do something a little bit different. Uh, I want to try and cruise around on this track that's above us. It is a high speed track, so we are going to have to have a certain amount of speed, but I want to try and hit the cruise on this at uh, maybe a little bit lower, like 75 or so, and see what we can do on something that has slopes and hills and things that are maybe a little bit more challenging for a car like this. Uh, I'm hoping, and we may as well just jump up gears, <laughs> of course, but I'm hoping that uh, using cruise we can get a consistent speed and then be able to define a fuel economy. Um, but obviously it's going to be up to my steering as well, which is, as you can tell, maybe not the most precise. Oh no, we might not have enough grip to hold onto this track. Um, <laughs> that is a small issue I probably should have thought of beforehand. So down in the flats, it's going to be basically the same. Uh, we'll just try and do maybe one loop of this, and then we'll go for something a bit more complex. Um, <laughs> I'd be interested actually to kind of calculate the fuel economy over the course of something. We could do that using uh, just filling up the tank a certain amount and then uh, dividing it by how much we end up using. However, um, <laughs> at this point, we're using a lot of fuel to stay on the track. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. This was a bit of a fail. Oh yeah, you probably noticed that I converted the Jeep to two-wheel drive, and uh, yeah, that was purposeful. I know it is Jeep blasphemy, but <laughs> it makes sense for this competition. Same thing with the Hummer. Two-wheel drive is more efficient. And there are a few reasons for that. One of them is uh, four-wheel drive, you're carrying around a lot of extra weight, and uh, obviously there's more rotational mass, stuff is spinning in the places where two-wheel drive does not have anything, such as a front drive shaft. <laughs> you don't even have to be running in four-wheel drive for your four-wheel drive to be less efficient. I think the funny thing about this comparison is that this engine is more powerful, larger, it has two turbos, which is insane, uh, and it is in a heavier vehicle. Um, which I forgot to check the weight of at the end of this. <laughs> I probably should have. But it just makes me think, like, it's all about the tune and the driving style. That's what you're going to need to get a good economy. Um, in terms of your average everyday car, like, I think what hypermilers would suggest, or just people who care about economy, uh, me being one of those people, I'm just not totally knowledgeable at it yet. The biggest modification you can make to improve your economy is change your driving habits. Like, 
drastically sometimes for for people who drive with their foot on the throttle all the way all the time like to be honest i don't think i've ever floored it in any of my cars ever <laughs> which is uh, probably something you should stick to the track uh, where you probably aren't too worried about economy unless it's an endurance race um, but just out on the everyday roads like you can ease into acceleration you don't need to go hardcore i find now that i'm driving manual um sometimes my accelerations are a little bit off like i i missed time a shift or something or i didn't exit the corner properly and uh, i'm stuck in a higher gear than i should be <laughs> uh, and i'm accelerating slowly um, i find that some like soccer moms and suvs will come right up close to me and that is something that never happened in my infinity because i was always uh driving a little bit quicker than maybe i should be but it just has me cautious of like the economy that I'm getting versus the safety, obviously, versus my driving style now being changed uh, to suit a different car. But also the fact that most people just don't care. <laughs> I don't think these people are driving for the sake of their economy. They're probably just wanting to get somewhere and they are just impatient or whatever the case. Some people are just impatient to be impatient. But my point in saying that is you don't have to go with that lifestyle. Uh, I think us as uh, North Americans, we're very concerned about being on time for things. Personally, I am uh, very, very worried about time, uh, and I like to be very on time for things, but it doesn't always have to be that way. It can be a little relaxed every once in a while. You don't need to get to work two minutes earlier. You don't need to get home two minutes earlier on that Friday. It's not that big a deal. There's no point in risking it. You may as well save a little bit of money and drive a little bit slower. Just a little bit though, not too slow. So I'm kind of curious uh, with this car, now, now that we've tested out its economy, this is a Hummer, right? It, it's got baldish tires, they're hard long life, they will spin a lot, but is it still useful as a Hummer? And we'll try the same thing with the Jeep. Um, I feel like we're gonna need this rear diff lock. <laughs> Probably gonna be necessary as we attempt to go off road. Uh, I'm going to stick it out in one because this thing can bang the rev limiter all day and have no problems, but this car is low after its changes, and even with a normal preset, it's not really that bouncy or stiff, it's just very much in between, so I kind of want to see what it'll do. I mean, so far, not bad. <laughs> uh, we got an over rev risk there, so I'm going to stick it out in third, perhaps. Um, you know, that's actually not terrible. Let's just try going right through one of these. Okay, we almost flooded the engine, but... <laughs> hey, two-wheel drive? Decent off-road, apparently, as long as you got a good setup. Okay, we're going in the deep water here, and we're hydro-locked. Okay, that was a waste of time. <laughs> Let's try the Jeep. So one thing about the Jeep is that it is still wickedly quick, and that's because it actually has proper gears still. Uh, if I accelerate out of first here, we can get up nice and high, and then once again, Boom, right into second, going fast, well over 100 kilometers an hour. I gotta turn here, otherwise I'm gonna hit a wall, but my point is that this thing is still quick. Uh, much quicker than a real Jeep, I would suspect. It actually has more power as well, because I ended up gaining power when I did a retune. That's kind of what I was saying before about it not being the best in terms of tuning. Um, it is fun though, goodness. Uh, a hyper milling car that can do both? <laughs> Why not? Okay, I'm gonna lock the rear diff and uh, that'll cut down on our wheel spin a little bit. We'll stick it out in maybe second gear for this off-roading montage. Oh, that's a bit deeper than I thought it was. Okay, <laughs> let me try again. Oh yeah, this thing still has the inline six that I made for it, uh, which was supposed to be for the Jeep in general. Uh, four liter inline six, no massive V10s here. <laughs> oh man, okay, come on now. Um, I'm a little stuck. Third gear maybe? This wheel spin isn't helping. <laughs> Come on, I've played enough SnowRunner to know how to get out of this. Full throttle! Oh, easy! <laughs> oh, right into a tree. Yep, just like SnowRunner. Well, I think that concludes our adventures with the Jeep and the Hummer for now. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments, and uh, if you enjoy this sort of hyper-miling uh, stuff. Hopefully I didn't say hyper-milling too often there. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm having a lot of fun with it, as you can probably tell. This is something that I enjoy, it's something that I find interesting, 
and uh, I'm definitely down to try more things like this in the future, including making a um, Bugo version uh, with extreme fuel economy, swapping the engine and everything. I'd love to be able to do Atkins cycle engines and like uh, have ridiculous economy through that, but obviously we're limited by automation's own limits and uh, that is one of them. <laughs> no hybrids, no electrics, no weird cycles, just the basic stuff, but hey, it does it well, so I can't complain. And yes, you may have noticed I'm off-roading with the Jeep, however, without four-wheel drive, I think we're not going to be able to do as well as I'd hope, and I'm not even going to attempt that thing down there, because I know we're not going to make it. But yeah, that's it for this video, thank you for watching. Check out my second channel, and check out my uh, website as well if you're interested in the stickers. They are quite good, <laughs> and uh, don't worry, they are um, high quality as well. I ship them myself, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, just look at the trusted owners here. <laughs> I'm hoping that by showing off these stickers, more people will be down with it. I want to show you that people actually buy them, <laughs> I'm not just saying it for nothing. But it's time to thank the channel supporters right after I crash this Jeep into something else, because I feel like it needs to be crushed. Uh, maybe off the side of this ramp. Let's do it. Here we go. All of this stuff is shed. And boom. It's beautiful. Elegant and flattened. I like to take some time to thank those who have chosen to support this channel, specifically those who are advanced supporters, channel members that are in the higher tier of my uh, support re regime. Well, that's not the right word for it. Um, <laughs> my support ladder of totally not capitalism, don't worry about it. Um, so we have QT Bear, Terry Williams, Jean Volpalms, GA Pope, Davis Hester, The German Dude, Mickey K1, Sleep64, Jug, Childish Sin, and Buckle. Thank you guys and the gals. I don't know if there are any girls here, let's be real. The analytics say otherwise <laughs> uh, for your support. Appreciate you lads a lot. Thanks for sticking with me even though things have been a bit rocky the past month. I haven't really been feeling like making videos and I just didn't want to make a video that I didn't feel like making and have it be bad. So I've been doing streams instead and I've been enjoying those. <laughs> anyway guys, appreciate it. See you again next time.